Okay, thanks guys. So um, I'm Catherine Brown. I'm the executive editor of a journal called Development, published by the company of Biologists. Uh, we're a small not-for-profit publishing organization based here in the UK. Um, and, and really what I'm, I'm doing kind of now is a slightly retrospective advert for the, um, for the workshop that one of my colleagues is organizing on publishers and ECRs working together, so early career researchers working together, uh, which is being organized by my colleague Rainier um, and Rose Penfield, Penfold, sorry. Um, and But what I wanted to do, and, and the reason that we wanted to just present to a broader audience is that we're sort of interested in gaining uh, information and feedback from the community about how different publishers are engaging in different ways um, with early career researchers. And this is just sort of uh, my view of, of our, um, our community and our uh, the people that we need to care about. So our authors, our editors, our reviewers, and our readers. And I'm not going to talk about that kind of downstream thing to our readers at all, but really talk about the ways that we're engaging with early career uh, researchers from that more upstream side, so authors, editors, and reviewers. And in this really brief talk, what I'm just going to do is highlight a few what I think are really good initiatives from, uh, from other publishers as well as from ourselves. And then also just very, very quickly talk about what the workshop's really going to be talking about of, of why uh, are we doing this and not just how, but also why is it important and why are we investing in it? So these are just some examples. And I think authors is one where it's a bit harder to find examples. So what we did when we were putting together this workshop is we reached out to a bunch of publishers uh, through our various networks for people who wanted to tell us about examples of things they were doing. And most people talked about editors and reviewers, and I'll talk about those in a bit more. But I think also thinking about how do we support our authors, specifically how we support early career researchers. You know, we all do lots for our authors, but specifically what do we do for early careers? And I thought this was a really nice example. So this is um, regional studies uh, journal, and they have an early careers papers section where the editors, they work, uh, a group of the editors of the journal actually really provide direct feedback towards authors, work with the authors to really guide the authors towards a high quality publication. And then they waive the APCs for those authors as well. And that's really helping to train the next generation of authors on how to how to write and how to publish. And I think that's a really nice example of something that I think is less common uh, in our industry. Um, editors, I think there are uh, quite a lot of schemes out there now. So this is the example of, of um, Age and Aging, which is um, what Rose Penfold, who's co-organizing this workshop, I was doing at the moment, so she's on an editorial fellowship. So she's a, a, a trainee doctor and she's actually now uh, in the middle of an editorial fellowship where she's gaining training on the editorial processes. She's actually handling manuscripts. She's been doing some research for the journal, contributing to the journal social media and really sort of learning about the, the behind the scenes of, um, of how, how a publisher and how a journal works. Another, another organization that we're aware of that's doing something similar is Applied Microbiology International, Catherine Spiller um, from Applied Microbiology International is here at this meeting. So do go and talk to her as well if you're interested in learning more about these kinds of things. And then finally, what I think are the most common kinds of interactions that we're having with, with early career researchers sort of directly is around uh, reviewers. And I've taken here the example of IOP Publishing because I think they've got a really extensive program um, of supporting early career researchers in training uh, to become peer reviewers. So they run a peer review excellence program, which has an online training course, sort of in-person workshops and gives some certification. And again, if you're interested in finding out more about that, go talk to uh, Laura Feetham Walker, who's here at this meeting and I think is giving a lightning talk at some point as well. Um, and I would say that, you know, I think that a broad range of publishers are engaging in these things. So, you know, Nature Communications has a really, um, a big peer review training program as well. And so, you know, I think both, I think the Ukunaki is a, a society publisher has this as, as part of their mission, which I'll come on to there. But um, for for commercial publishers, sort of why, why are we doing this? Why are we engaging with early career research is something I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but the final example that I wanted to give you was just um, early career researchers as ambassadors for the journal or for the publisher more generally. And um, this example I'm going to shamelessly take from, from us as an organisation. So we run um, an online community called Prelights, which is around uh, highlighting uh, preprint literature. And we've recently launched an ambassador scheme for that. And for us, this is really about these this group of ambassadors who are working uh, with our Prelights community manager, Rainier, who's... Uh, organizing this other workshop to provide strategic input on the site to help us develop new activities to help expand our reach um, within the community and then this group are also receiving some career development from the company staff and again there are more and more uh, publishers that are starting to talk about having early career ambassador schemes uh, or engaging early career uh, researchers to help with sort of outreach into the community 
So as I said, what I what I just wanted to touch on, and, and this is really what the workshop's going to be exploring over the next few sessions, is is why why do publishers spend time and money in doing this? And as I said, for some publishers, it's really an integral part of their mission. I think for a lot of us, it's really about building loyalty with the future leaders of their field. If we can ca capture them early and get them to like us at the beginning of their careers, hopefully they'll like us at the end of their careers as well, or in the middle of their careers. Um, I think we really feel that um, for for reviewer schemes. If we train people, then it's going to improve the quality of the peer review that we get for the journal. We're also going to get useful feedback. I think all too often, traditionally, we talk to our editorial boards, we talk to the senior leaders in the field, and we get a very one dimensional perspective from them. By reaching out to earlier career researchers, then we get a different perspective and a useful source of feedback. Um, we also can expand the reach of the journals. And then finally, if we're totally uh, honest about it, we also get positive PR out of it. It looks good if we're seen to be engaging with members of the community. And so I think, you know, again, hopefully we're going to come up with a whole load of other uh, aspects to this over the course of the, the workshop over the next couple of days. But what's in it for the ECRs? So it's pretty clear that publishers are going to benefit. What do the ECRs get out of it? Um, and I think that this is sort of what immediately occurs to me is that, you know, they're going to gain some training in skills and activities that are useful for their future career. They're going to gain insider knowledge of how publishing works, which as they go on in their publishing in, in their academic career is hopefully going to help them. Um, in some of these schemes, they really get to expand their pro professional network. So for pre lights, for example, one of the things we really offer is some networking, some gathering people together, at least virtually to to talk to each other and to expand their network. Um, we, you know, in general, a lot of ECRs see these as profile raising activities. They get their names out there more. They get CV points, which is good for them. And they also get some exposure to, to non-academic careers. Um, so as I said, this is really what this workshop is going to be exploring over the next couple of days. We're also hoping that what we might be able to do out of this workshop is also put together a sort of white paper with some guidance on the benefits, the challenges, the sort of um, potentially actually the really sort of practical things that you need to think about when setting up these sorts of schemes. So if any of you are interested in this sort of area and want to talk to us more about it, please do come talk to to me, to Rania, um, or to Rose over the next couple of days, um, and let us know that you're interested, and we'd love to, to talk more about these kinds of things. And as I say, actually, hopefully, from out of this workshop, put out some kind of um, concrete output from it. So thank you very much. <laughs>